Okay, I'm going to share my screen here. All right. Hey, everyone. I'm going to go over airspace today. So I'm going to do that using this slideshow here that I created. And I want to talk about airspace. This is specifically for the uh, Part 107 exam. So uh, this is uh, for the Part 107 drone exam. So if you're going to take the drone exam, you need to know about airspace. And I'm going to do that for you today, talk about those things. Um, in further videos, I'll talk about other things such as longitude and latitude, uh, weather, drone rules, but today it's specifically about airspace. Uh, this right here, this chart is going to be very helpful for you. This uh, talks about the different types of airspace. So uh, we have A, B, C, D, E, and G. However, uh, you'll want to know the military or the aviation alphabet uh, for these. So going forward, I'll refer to these using the aviation alphabet, which would be class alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, and, uh, Golf, and, um, and Golf, that's it. There is no Foxtrot, there's no airspace F. Um, so class A airspace, as we'll see up here in the red, that is for commercial flight. So anything over 18,000 feet MSL, mean sea level, so meaning 18,000 feet above the sea level, not above the ground, is in class A airspace. Um, so class A airspace, is for planes that are traveling long distances at 18,000 feet above sea level. As a drone pilot, we never come close to flying in class alpha airspace, but it is important to know uh, what it is because you'll be asked questions about it on your part 107 exam. Um, sometimes people, my students will ask me, how come it's MSL? Uh, there's two reasons for that, you know, early aviation planes uh, for their, um, for figuring out altitude based it off of mean sea level rather than above ground level. So that's kind of a big holdover from just early aviation times. The other reason that they use, in this specific case, use MSL mean sea level, so 18,000 feet above the sea level, even if you're in, say, Colorado, where you're well above sea level when you're standing on ground, you know, you could be a mile above the sea level there, they still, it's still 18,000 feet MSL. The uh, other reason they use it is just so it's evenly across the entire country. Think about it like that, um, that it's not 18,000 feet above ground level because say you're at a, uh, in a plane, you're flying across the country, all of a sudden you might dip out of this airspace if it was based above ground level. So just note, MSL is mean sea level, AGL right here is above ground level. Um, class Bravo airspace, class B, I want you to think of this as big cities. This is the nation's busiest airport. So B, big city, blue. On this sectional chart, this airspace is going to have a solid blue line. Um, it consists of multiple layers, like an upside down wedding cake. Uh, in an example, I'm in the state of North Carolina. So in North Carolina, examples, the Charlotte airport. So the Charlotte airport's a hub for American Airlines. It's a busy airport. It's a big city. And it's a Bravo airspace. This is what it looks like on the sectional chart. So this is not Charlotte. This here is Cleveland's airport. So you'll see that right here. But this would be a class Bravo airspace. And you'll see these solid blue lines. So that's what you're looking for here. Um, the thing that's tough about these sectional charts, I think, for people is airspace has a lot of stuff in it, right? So like you'll see this is a smaller little airport around here that has a dash blue line. We'll get to what that means. So you got to try to recognize that there's a, I mean, big cities have a lot of stuff in them, right? So, I mean, yeah, there's going to be other things within that airspace, um, but just recognize that the blue side of the lines are res designating class Bravo airspace, right? Blue solid, B blue, that should be easy. <clears throat> Next airspace, so going down in busyness and significance is class Charlie airspace usually five nautical miles radius uh, from zero to 4,000 feet. This is something they do ask on the 107 in some questions, like what's the ceiling of class Charlie airspace, 4,000 feet. So I recommend that you make, and I apologize, let me fix this. This says AGL and that really should be MSL. Um, okay, I hate to do that in the middle of a recording, but I want it to be accurate. So usually, um, usually it goes, the ceiling goes up to 4,000 feet MSL above mean sea level. Um, but that doesn't mean always, right? There's obviously most of the time it's going to vary, but they do ask that what is like the default or what normally is the ceiling of a class Charlie airspace. The answer is 4,000 feet MSL. 
though if you look at the map you'll see they're all kind of different so just um make sure you pay attention to the map and i'll show you how you can view what the ceiling is and what the floor is um the second shell for the outer shelf is 10 nautic miles radius usually again that can vary i mean that's this can vary from airport to airport some of them aren't even circles uh what you'll notice is the outer shelf and this is kind of the important part and we'll look at it on the next uh, slide here, the outer shelf does not go to the ground, right? So this inner shelf is from the ground to the ceiling. This is controlled airspace. You cannot fly your drone in here. Um, but on this outer shelf, if you're below, let's say this one is 1,200 feet, and, and really it will tell us here, this is, uh, the, again, we're in Ohio, I picked. So the Akron uh, Canton Airport. And let me see where it's at. Um, this one right here is the, oh, so the, the floor here is pretty high, is 2,500 feet. So you'll see two five. So what they do is they drop the zeros on these. So the floor of this airspace, this outer circle is 2,500 feet and the ceiling is 5,200 feet. So you could fly your drone. If you're out here, you can fly your drone all around in this area as long as you're below 2,500 feet, which you should be almost all the time if you're flying a drone because the legal limit for a drone is 400 feet, something you need to know. Um, <laughs> you'll see in the center circle, it says SFC, that stands for surface. So you can't um, fly your drone anywhere in here without ATC permission. Right? Uh, our Charlie airports are designated with purple or magenta, however you want to say it. To me, I can't tell the difference between purple and magenta, but it's magenta, um, but whatever you want to call that. So it's the magenta solid lines. So if it's a magenta solid line, it's a class Charlie airport, as opposed to these were solid blue, right? But you'll notice in these Bravos, um, it had that same thing going on. So this 30 over 80. So the floor here is 3,000 feet because you add on two zeros. The ceiling is 8,000 feet, right? Same thing. The inner circle here, 19, so 1,900 feet. As it goes out further and further, then those, uh, those floors get higher up. Again, at the center, it's surface. You can't fly your drone anywhere in here. You can fly your drone here without air traffic control permission under 1,900 feet. Okay. Um, let's see. Examples of Clash Charlie airports uh, in my area would be Raleigh and Myrtle Beach. They're both Clash Charlie. That's the big things I want to get there. Delta is the next airspace. So these are going to be your more regional airports. Uh, Clash Charlie is still a city airport. It's not your busiest airports, but like Raleigh, uh, Myrtle Beach, those are fairly busy airports, certainly airports you know people would use pretty commonly. Um, probably internet, both of those are international airports. Charlie's usually will be international. Class Deltas could be international, but usually not. They're going to be more regional airports. Um, so these are going to be your smaller airports, but still almost always commercial airports. Uh, so uh, they're still going to have commercial traffic in them. So here it says surrounding airports with a control tower, zero to 2,500 feet. Uh, and then, um, and again, that's going to vary from, from air, airspace to airspace. No specific radius here shaped around the flight patterns. I still mostly see deltas as circles, uh, even though it says this. Um, but for example, with, uh, well, I'll show you a different one later, but I'll show you one where it's not in a circle. Um, outside control tower hours, this is an important um, question here that you'll find on the part 107, is outside control tower hours, class Delta airspace turns into class E and class G airspace. I've seen a few people get this one wrong and just say G. It turns into E or Echo and Gulf. So you want to know that, that the class Delta, when the control tower closes down at night, it no longer is a Delta airspace. It's now an Echo and a Gulf airspace. Usually it's Gulf from ground up until like 700 feet. And then from 700 feet AGL above ground level up, up uh, higher, it will be um, Echo airspace. And uh, um, okay. These are blue on the map, but they're dashed lines. So basically it goes blue, magenta, blue, magenta, and solid, solid, dash, dash. So like a Bravo's blue solid, Charlie's magenta solid, Delta's blue dashed, Echo is magenta dashed. 
you know, blue magenta, blue magenta, solid, solid, dash, dash. Make flashcards, write all this stuff down on a flashcard. So dashed line on map. Um, Wilmington is a class Delta airport. That's the city that I live in. So Wilmington, North Carolina. Um, uh, let's see. Here's another example. So this is actually the same exact airport as this one over here. I believe it was this one. Yeah, is this one over here. So this is this is interesting, right? So a couple things. First off, I just want you to understand that I know this is a Delta airspace because it has a dashed blue line. Now, what I think it's tricky for people on this part 107 exam, and when you're looking at these maps, is it's like, well, is this right here? Is this Delta or is this um, Bravo? Because it looks like you're in Bravo. But don't forget that in this case, that remember that three zero, you add two zero, so that's 3,000 feet. Anything under that 3,000 feet is not in the Bravo airspace. So this right here is Delta up into 3,000 feet. And that's what that 30 with the box around it. I'm going to move forward slides again so we can zoom in. So that's what this here means, this 30 with a box in it. It's telling us that anything that's below 30,000 feet is now delta. Anything above 30,000 feet is now going to be in your Bravo airspace, which, sorry to keep going back and forth, but I just really want you to get this, is like this shelf is starts at 30,000 feet. So 30,000 feet and above is Charlie airspace. In this case, you're, you're, it's the Bravo starts at 1,900 feet. So that's the Bravo should supersede that Delta. Um, let's see, anything else about Deltas? A uh, one, uh, I'll get into that later. Okay, I think those are the main things here. Um, all right, moving on. Echo airspace, class echo airspace usually starts at, okay, so this one gets confusing. It usually starts at 1,200 feet um, and, and goes up to 1,800 feet. So if you're asked on the test, sometimes they'll do a tricky little question like, like they'll give you a busy airport like this. You're going to see like probably five of these where you'll get a super busy airport. I saw Dallas-Fort Worth on mine. And they're going to ask you something like, you're over a tower. Let me find a large tower. You're, um, well, I don't see a large tower, but you're over some large tower that's like a thousand feet. And you're, you know, if you're flying in a drone, you can be 400 feet over the tower. And so it's like, now, now you're going to be like 1400 feet up. And I can't believe there's no large towers here. I'm trying to find one. Um, oh, here they are. Here's a group of large towers. So say you're over these large towers. And then you're going to be 400 feet above them. And let's just say these towers, oh, I can't zoom in. It's going to make me go forward if I try to zoom in. Um, yeah, those, I think they say they're like 1,800 feet. So even the tower is already at like 1,800 feet or something. The problem here is, is if you're over this, these towers here, now you're going to be at like, um, you're going to be in class echo airspace. So you might look at it and be like, oh, I'm not in Bravo. Um, and I'm not in anything else, so I must be in golf, right? Well, the thing with Echo that you want to know is everywhere, whether you're in, you know, one of these airspaces over here or not, if you're over 1,200 feet um, MSL, then you're going to be in Echo airspace. So just know that Echo airspace, and I know I'm jumping forward and back a lot, but I just think it helps. Echo airspace starts at 1,200 feet, sorry, uh, AGL, starts at 1,200 feet here. So <laughs> um, that's just something that you want to know. Echo air, once you get to 1,200 feet AGL, you're in echo airspace, even if you're in an area that's like uncontrolled airspace, once you get that high. Okay, so that's echo. Um, otherwise, there are other parts that can be echo lower than 1,200 feet, and those are going to be marked with purple magenta color on the map. So echoes gets like two designations. There's dashed lines and then there's shaded circles. So for example, here we got our shaded circles. So these are gonna be really small airports, uh, could be private airports, uh, could be regional airports, but uh, could be helipads, like helicopter zones, um, whatever it might be. If you see these shaded circles, this is telling you that echo airspace starts at 700 feet AGL above ground level. So if you're under 700 feet, so if you're over here, you can fly your drone here without ATC authorization. Um, 
even if you're right by the airport, as long as you're, you know, not on private, their private land or something, even then you could still fly. You just can't land and take off, but um, you don't want to interfere with the airplane, obviously. But the thing is you could fly in this airspace as long as you're under 700 feet. That's what the shaded magenta means is that the echo airspace starts at 700 feet. Now it might give you a question like this, like, let's say, let me see if I can find a tower that's pretty tall. Here's 900 foot tower. Okay, so if you're you're flying over that tower, which you're legally allowed to do, it, they say that limits 400 feet, but if you're going over a tower, then you can be over the tower. But in this case, it would put you in the echo airspace. And they will ask a question like this. They'll say, uh, you've been hired to fly your UA over this tower right here. Um, do you need ATC authorization? And the answer would be yes, because you're in this echo airspace above 700 feet. Now, if you were in, say, a tower that was, uh, you know, outside of that airspace, and you're also at 900 feet, then no, you don't. At 900 feet, you don't need AC, ATC authorization if you're over a tower. All right. And, oh. I thought I had a, oh, well, I thought I had a dashed echo as well. So if the echo is a dashed line like this, if it's a magenta dashed line, that's echo airspace that starts at the ground level. Let me see if I can find, I really thought I put one in here. I guess I didn't. Sorry, everybody. Um, yeah, so anyway, if it's a dashed, I'm sure there's one over here, a dashed echo, then or a dash magenta line, just know that that's, that echo starts at the, um, at the, like, uh, at ground level. Let me find one over here so you know what I'm talking about here. Greenville, North Carolina is exactly that. So this is Delta because it's dash blue. And then I need to be up higher. Here we go. This is Greenville, North Carolina's airport. See how it's a dashed magenta? This means the airspace starts at ground level. So this is a commercial airport, commercial planes flying here, a really small airport, maybe they get two flights a day, I don't know, really small. But anyway, that dashed magenta line means the airspace starts at ground level. The, whereas this shaded magenta area means it starts at 700 feet. So this is 700 feet, this out here is 700 feet, but once you get in here, it's at ground level is where the airspace starts. Last airspace to talk about is class G golf airspace. Think of um, think of it like this, G, good, this is where you can fly. So this is any airspace that's not any other type of airport or any other designated airspace. This is basically where you can fly your drone. Um, and this would go up to 14,500 feet um, MSL. Uh, all right, well, thank you for watching the video. Um, let me know if you have any questions. And uh, then uh, we'll go over longitude and latitude in the next one.